We're going to go ahead and begin. For those of you not in your place, we'll invite you to find one. And we are glad that you are here. What a special day for everybody. I want to let everybody know, first of all, that Jean Beeman is with the Lord. Uh, she went to be with the Lord yesterday, and so be praying for the family, for Sherry, and all the rest of them during this time. No details have been given. So just remember the uh, family of Jean Beeman, and that's, that is an important thing. We do have missionary updates, and so I'll ask Joel to come if he would. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, let me share with um, with you um, from James and Lauren Peavy, and then uh, I have another letter to share as well. Uh, but James and Lauren Peavy say, Happy Thanksgiving from the Peavies. It's just the five of us today, which is a big change from our usual Thanksgiving celebrations. And just as we were starting to feel blue, a sweet friend showed up with a Thanksgiving gift for us, full of yummy flavors, coffee, and even a craft for my kiddos to enjoy. So thankful for my husband, my children, and these dear friends who come along so, alongside of us and encourage us when we need it most. We are so excited about a new ministry for our family. If you have been with us for long, you know we love our local baseball team, the Toros del Este, the Bulls of the East. <laughs> James is working with Baseball Chapel and will be uh, a chaplain for the Toros, the, the Bulls, this year. So on Sunday mornings, as you head to Sunday school, please pray for him and these men as he shares God's word. Several of the players come from the States every year to play in the Caribbean League. So these are men from the Dominican, America, even Czechoslovakia. Some travel with their families and children. We want to be an encouragement to these families, so pray for us to have opportunities to be able to show we care. And that's from James and Lauren Peavy. And then uh, another note to share with you, and this is from Ryan and Joy Owen. Um, I will be honest, it, it, it may seem abrupt, but this is something that's been going on in their family for quite some time. Uh, Pastor may know a few more details than some of us, but um, I'll, I'll just share with you and so that you can be praying for them, because it is a, a serious change for them. Uh, dear Decula Church family, we thank God for your faithful love and support over the years. God has been so faithful in our ministry, and we give him the glory for what we have seen him do. During the course of the last year, we have prayed diligently that God would open and close doors of ministries for us. Since returning to the States last February, it has become clear that God was changing our ministry direction. After receiving advice from medical doctors about current needs, as well as seeking wise counsel, we heartily believe that God is moving us towards a ministry in Michigan. This ministry will entail training and, and discipling missionary pilots and mechanics before they leave for the field. This change in ministry will requ require us to leave Baptist Midmissions as supported missionaries. The new position is salaried and that will allow our supporting churches to use our support to help other missionaries reach their field. As of December 2021, we will no longer be accepting support through Baptist Midmissions. We love you and thank God for how you have prayed and sacrificed for our ministry to the Ghanaian people. Love in Christ, Ryan and Joy Owen. Um, again, a lot of this has to do with Joy's health, uh, and we don't know the details of it all, but it's, it's uh, serious enough that it doesn't allow them, wouldn't allow them to return safely and comfortably uh, in her health condition, and, and from what I understand, it's something that would be an ongoing struggle for them. So, um, <coughs> Pastor has put out some su uh, suggestion. I don't know if when you want to bring that up, but or has that already been put out to the whole church? Yeah. Okay, yeah. But anyway, just wanted to let you guys know. Pray for Ryan and Joy Owen and their new ministry in Michigan. Thank you. I sent out an email. And just dear sweet people I, I know that they're seeking the will of the Lord and by the way nothing bad all good and I'm thankful today's the last day to bring in shoe boxes and I'm thankful to see what's back there this is one of those ministries you can be young you can be old 
and you can take part. And so I'm thankful for those that did, and Amy will be taking those this week. Thank you. I appreciate that. A couple of uh, announcements and prayer requests. Uh, we're praising the Lord that uh, Wendell uh, Holcomb is no longer in the care home. Uh, they brought Wendell home, and that's going to be a, a forever thing until he drives Mary Jo nuts. And so that's, that's good. <laughs> Do be praying. Uh, Ed Norps is our, our only person that we pray for now in a care home. Do remember Bill and Gloria. It is such a sad situation, ongoing sad situation. So pray for Bill and Gloria. We're praying for Mary Swanson and for her recovery and ability to come back home to her home. So pray there. Then we're praying for our humanly impossible unspoken requests. And many people have them. And that is just something that we need to be praying for. Remember our adults and healthy marriages and families. This is an unusual time in 16 different ways. So please be praying for uh, healthy marriages, the couples that we know in our church, as well as that we know outside of our church, that the Lord might just, uh, might just oversee in, in many different ways. So again, Joel, please come back. We're running back and forth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer on these. Father, we're so very grateful for this Thanksgiving season. Thank you, Lord, for the time we could spend with family and, uh, and loved ones. Uh, there's many who are still traveling or returning home uh, from, from visiting family. Lord, we pray that you would um, bring them home safely, help them to have safe travels. Father, we are so grateful for the many things that you've done, uh, Lord, in our lives, in our homes, in our ministries. Lord, this, this has been another pretty rough year, uh, Lord, and we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what next year holds. Uh, but, Lord, we know that you are faithful and in control of all these situations, Lord. Um, I know that for many, also, this, is, this has been a, a year of, of sadness and struggle, uh, Lord, for hardship. And we know that, uh, Lord, you are also in control of those situations. And, Lord, we pray and we thank you for, uh, for the, the good news of uh, of Wendell returning home, and uh, Lord, thank you that he's able to be with family during this time, and, and the, the, all the family that surrounds him to care for him and offer help. Uh, Lord, it's, uh, it's encouraging to us, and I know it's encouraging to, to him to, to know that he's home and surrounded by loved ones. Lord, thank you that Mary is recovering as well, and that she uh, is or soon will be, will be home as well. Uh, Father, we um, look forward to, to seeing her again. We, we miss seeing her face and hearing her laughter and her stories. Father, we pray for Ed Norps as he is still in, in the care home, Lord, that, again, the doctors would just know how to best care for him and, and, uh, and keep his, his health. And, Lord, I pray that um, folks would be around him to be an encouragement to him, especially during these, these holiday seasons. Father, I pray that you would uh, make this, this season a, a, a time of, of remembrance and of, of thanksgiving and of joyfulness, Lord, as we uh, remember uh, your, the, the coming day, the, the approach of, of, Lord, celebrating your birth, your coming to this, this earth, Lord, Lord, to, to be born and to save us, Lord, we, uh, as we share with, with our children and, and um, read through scripture and through perhaps the, the an advent calendar or Whatever we use, Lord, I pray that it would be clear, Lord, what we celebrate, what we um, rejoice over during this time, that it is you and, and not something physical or, or trivial. Father, I pray that so many who don't have family during this time, and I pray for their comfort, Lord, and their encouragement. Uh, when the, these, these seasons come along, that for many it's so, so very joyful and, and full of wonderful memories. For some, it's, it's not, at least not yet. And it will take time, Lord. And, uh, and I pray, Lord, for the, the comfort and the joy in their hearts as well. Thank you, Father, for this time of rejoicing and of, and of singing and of reading of Scripture and of hearing your word preached, Lord. And I pray that your name would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Joel. Well, this morning, as we come away from Thanksgiving, I'm sure that we all have many things to be thankful for. 
Um, it, it's kind of on everybody's mind right now, right, to be thankful. Well, I want to share a, a note of thanks and a note of congratulations with one of our young people this morning. Uh, this message is for Rose. Rose, are you there? Okay, good. Rose, this is for you. Happy birthday to our double digits daughter, Rose. We have loved these last 10 years with you and love the young lady that you are. We pray the Lord will bless you and lead you always. Happy 10th birthday, Rose. That's mom, dad, Joellen, and Annie. Happy birthday. And that's today, right? Today is the day. Happy birthday, Rose. I hope that you all had a, had a great Thanksgiving. I think we had one of the best ever. Um, I hope that you did too. Isn't it a joy to be able to, to gather together with the ones that you love and to, and to spend time being thankful and just joy, enjoying one another's company? But you know what? Every Sunday, we get to do that as a body of believers. And isn't it a joy to gather together to be able to corporately worship our God because he is worthy of our praise? Amen? And now, no matter, I think no matter where you stand on the whole uh, Christmas comes too early, too late kind of thing, it's okay now, right? Because we're after Thanksgiving. So pretty much by all of the rules, whichever rule you keep to, like in our home, July 1st is about the day. But then again, for some, that's a little too early. We're going to sing, guess what? Christmas songs. Amen? Everybody in it with me? Praise the Lord. Let's stand together and let's sing together the first Noel. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep noel 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 born is the king of israel they look it up and saw Oh, come.
Lord Jesus Christ was born just like any of us are born. And as we know the story, the Lord Jesus Christ was born in, unfortunately, in ways that probably none of us were in, in the situation, I should say, where we were probably born either in a nice clean home or, or in the hospital. Our Lord was born into a feeding trough. Our Lord, though, was a human being in, in, in that he walked this earth as any one of us does, as Scripture tells us. And praise the Lord that he knows what it means to live that life. That made, made him, that was God's plan for him to be, because he was perfect, because he was sinless, he could be the perfect sacrifice so that we could come to our Heavenly Father, God. But as we consider his advent, as we consider him coming to earth, I like this song as we consider that Jesus, as the title says, Jesus was the joy of the highest heaven. And yet he stooped down and became and took on flesh to be like one of us. Consider the joy that it is to have a Savior as the Lord Jesus as we sing this song. Jesus, joy of the highest heaven, born as a little baby under a wondrous star. Like us crying, he takes his first breath, held by his mother helpless, close to her beating heart. Jesus, laid in a lowly manger, Facing a world of dangers, come to turn me, a stranger, into the child of God. Jesus, King of the highest heaven, learning to take his first steps, that he might bring us life. life us, knowing our smiles and sorrows, he showed the way to follow, a way that is true and right. Jesus, take away every darkness, steady my simple footsteps, that I might in your goodness live as a child of God. Jesus, Take away every darkness, steady my simple footsteps, that I might in your goodness live as a child of God. Thank you for singing with us this morning. to Dave and Prue. What a good day it is to be here. Would you take your Bible and turn to Colossians chapter 3. We'll be talking about our Thanksgiving service, though we are in the Christmas mode. Thank you, Dave. This is still Thanksgiving weekend. And with that thought in mind, we're going to be looking at a few verses this morning for the purpose of helping you to realize that Thanksgiving is not so much a holiday as it is a lifestyle for every believer. I begin reading in Colossians 3, 15. Thank you, those of you that turn. 
And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. It doesn't take a great imagination to look around and realize that much of our society, by and large, is full of ungrateful malcontents. It seems like people, so many people, only just want their own way. Thankfulness for them only occurs but when they say, I get mine. And as some little kids say, I'm just going to hold my breath until I do. There's a story in the scripture that I love. There were ten lepers that came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And leprosy is a, was, in those days, a fearful disease. Everybody had to stay away from lepers. And ten lepers came to the Lord Jesus Christ and asked to be healed. And they followed Jesus' directions, and all ten were healed. Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest so that there is a confirmation of healing. But only one of those ten, ten percent, came back to Jesus Christ and thanked him for what he has done. I think America is the only country where we trample each other on Black Friday and then look back and are so thankful for all we have on Thursday. Unthankful people seem to be everywhere. Would you consider yourself to be thankful? Oh, I know there are those moments, there are those times where maybe we're not as much as we should be. But I think of people in past history, people like Alexander the Great. He was not satisfied, even when he completely subdued all of the nations. He wept because there were no more worlds to conquer, and he died at an early age in a state of debauchery. Unthankful. Hannibal, that great one who crossed over the Alps, he, he filled three bushels of, with gold rings of those knights from countries that he had defeated. And yet Hannibal committed suicide by swallowing poison. Unthankful. Julius Caesar, we are all, all familiar with him. He stained his garments, historians say, in the blood of one million of his foes. And he conquered 800 cities. And yet he only came to the end by being stabbed by son of some of his best friends. Each one of those not thankful. Erwin Lutzer was the pastor of Moody Church in Chicago for many years. And I quote him. He wrote, It's only when we choose to give praise for the rough spots in life that we will begin to see them from God's perspective. If we don't give thanks in all things, we are living in unbelief for we are assuming that our circumstances are not controlled by the God who loves us. He goes on, I'm not saying that you should give thanks for sin, but you can thank God for how he will use that sin to teach, to rebuke, or to challenge you. Thank you, Pastor Lutzer. That was good. As I said... For the Christian, thanksgiving is not so much a holiday as it is a lifestyle. Every one of us should be known as thankful people. That is driven home in the Word of God. The word thanksgiving is found in the Bible 28 times. Thanks appears 73 times. 
giving thanks eight times, give thanks 39 times, and if you do your math quickly, that's 148 times where God has said to us, be thankful. It should be part of our lifestyle. Even when negative things or painful things or bad things happen, because they are only bad as we interpret them, not as God does that. In First Chronicles, I'll read in chapter 16, he says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. That word good as ascribed to God appears 138 times in the word of God. Do you ever look at situations and come to the conclusion that God's not good? That that wasn't a good experience? Now, it may not have been a fun experience. It might even have been a painful experience. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. It seems that God has an emphatic message for you and I this morning. Be thankful people. In Colossians chapter 3, would you look at verse 15? Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and the end says, and be thankfulness. It's a recurring theme in the book of Colossians, which the Apostle Paul wrote. He says in Colossians 1, verse 3, Colossians 1, 3, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Paul is telling us in this passage, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is recognizing and is sharing to us this morning that God is the one who is owed thanks because salvation and all of its parts are a gift from God. And we, we find that for by grace have you been saved, Christian, and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest everyone should boast. Are you truly a believer this morning? If you are, you can thank God for your salvation and all that God has done for you. The word always, which Paul has used, thanking those Colossians, should be considered in light of the previous phrase, that phrase where he is thanking God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is not only praying for the Colossians, but rather, he's always doing so by expressing thanksgiving to God. He's thankful. He's thankful in every way, especially because of their stand for the gospel. In very wicked times, when religion wasn't the uh, Las Vegas-style presentation, that we see in so many churches today. The Colossians stood firm for the gospel. Now, even in Paul's day, not everyone did that. Would you look in your, in your Bible at Galatians? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Ph Colossians. Just go down to Galatians chapter 1. And we see in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul is writing, and he's saying, I marvel. That's old-timey that's old words for I am blown away. I am horribly shattered or disappointed. 
I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him, that's Christ, who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. When Paul wrote Galatians, it was only a short generation away from when Jesus walked on this earth. And after Jesus was resurrected and returned to heaven, churches were being established. The gospel was being shared, and people were coming to Christ. <coughs> but with all of that said, many were developing a different gospel. They were saying it's okay to trust Christ, but you've got to keep the law. <coughs> it's okay to trust Christ, but you've got to burn candles. It's okay to trust Christ, but you've got to sacrifice. <coughs> Excuse me. So the different gospel. But look at verse 7. He says, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you <coughs> and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. I must have ate too much turkey. That's all I can say. <coughs> Pardon me. The Apostle Peter speaks to the same thing. Look at the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. Working towards the end of our New Testament. Peter also speaks of the false gospel that people were following in Paul's day. <coughs> and also, we see it all over today. Peter says, and this is a stern warning, for the time has come for judgment to begin <coughs> at the house of God. For if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Peter is saying, people who do not obey the gospel, trust Christ, come to faith in Christ, there will be a terrifying experience awaiting them. The Lord Jesus revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay a penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. It is a serious thing to not trust Christ, to not share the gospel for those that you know in the depth of their heart need Christ as their Savior. May we return back to Colossians chapter 3. Paul writes there in Colossians 3.17, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. How can we show our thankfulness? Well, whatever you do, whether it's in how you speak or how you act, do so for the glory of God. The simple rule of thumb for every believer, word and deed for God's glory, to do everything for his honor, how we act, how we speak, how we respond. Paul expressed the very same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, whether you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. He reminds us that we are to do so as we give thanks. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, Paul reminds us, this is Colossians 4, 2, 
Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. When we see all that God has done for us in all of our life, we need to just thank God and consider earnestly in prayer with thanksgiving. I'll read some verses. Ephesians 5 says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All things. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. But let's look together at, at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13, 15. The writer of Hebrews is driving home the point of this message. Hebrews 13, 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. God no longer wants sacrifices of grain or of animals or even in the Old Testament of people. He wants only the sacrifice of praise to him because of the fruit of our lips in thanksgiving. The psalmist, the writer of those Old Testament psalms, knew a great deal about this sort of sacrifice. If their writings could be characterized in any one way, it would be praise. I'll read these, Psalm 7. I will give thanks to the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 43, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. Sometimes, even in the light of life of a Christian, despair and discouragement can haunt us. You've battled it. And so have I. Psalm 108, I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises to you among the nations. Did you know all of the last five books of Psalms begins with praise the Lord? The Old Testament word is hallelujah. What a blessing to praise the Lord. And be thankful. Because of what God has done, peace has been declared between humanity and God for those that have trusted Christ alone as their Savior. Make no mistake, there is no peace between a person and God if there is no salvation. That peace that was declared was because of what Christ did for us. And now instead of living with war because of our lifestyle, we can live at peace because of what Christ has done and it is finished. That old song that Gaither wrote, it is finished, the battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. What a blessing to know that we can live in daily peace and thanksgiving because of Christ. And it's a peace that only Jesus can bring. Religion cannot do it. Society cannot do it. Economics cannot do it. Polis political things cannot do it. It's peace because of Christ. We close with what we began with, Colossians 3.15. 
That verse says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule. That word rule is an interesting word. It only appears in the Greek language one time. Brabuo is the word as we would say it in English. And it's the word translated rule, and it speaks of the umpire of a game that will make and decide the outcome of the game during the action. Let the peace of God rule. And a lot of people are not allowing that peace to rule in their life. A lot of church people struggle with that as well. The peace of Christ, based on his word that guides believers and makes decisions. We are surrounded by religion where the God that is worshipped is the God of emotions, the God of feelings, the God of how I'm going to be happy in life, which usually lasts until early Monday morning and then it's over. We live in a world where true gospel worship is not happening in our society. Let the peace of God rule in your life. And as the peace rules, we will become thankful people. And without peace, there is no thanksgiving. When we allow peace to rule, we will have a peaceful heart. When we allow peace to rule, we will have peace with God. When we allow peace to rule, we will live at peace with one another and regardless of what happens, even that which you can't control, we can have peace with God. Because of God's grace and God's goodness, we are saying, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. As we move into our Christmas season, which again should be a lifestyle, we can rejoice in what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. May we pray. Father, thank you for the love that we have in Christ. Lord, we, each one of us struggle with physical issues, some of them very painful the loss of loved ones. We struggle, Lord, with anxiety about what's going on in our society and what's happening health-wise with COVID. We struggle, Father, with the way other people behave and how they treat us and how we treat them. Father, may the peace of God rule in our hearts and may we be thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. Dave. Today as we close our service in a song of thanksgiving. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son, and now let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us, and now let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say,
Our Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the preaching of your word. We're thankful, Lord, for the privilege that it has been to gather together around your word. And Lord, we're thankful especially for the gift of salvation that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. As we go from this place, may we truly be thankful, not just because we've set aside time um, on in, in our country to be thankful, but truly to be thankful because you have commanded it and because there's so much in light of what you've done for us that we should be thankful for. May that thankfulness drive us to share the gospel with people that you bring in our path. May we truly help them to understand what it means to be saved and what it means to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Lord, for this season of Christmas where we where we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and all the glory and honor goes to you, Father, for that precious gift. Please go with us now and protect us and make us truly thankful for your word and for our salvation. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you for being here. You are dismissed. Thank you.